So what exactly is a mole? We're not talking about the animal, but in terms of chemistry, what is a mole? An example that I like to use is the word dozen. When you hear the word dozen, what do you think of? If I tell you that I have a dozen eggs, how many eggs do I have? A dozen is a quantity. It represents a specific number. It doesn't have to be eggs. A dozen simply represents 12. If I say I have a dozen calculators, that means I have 12 calculators. If I have a dozen hats, I have 12 hats. A mole is very similar to a dozen in that a mole is also a quantity. It represents a number. The only difference is it represents a very, very, very large number. 6.022 times 10 to the 23. That's what it represents. So if I have a mole of books, I have 6 times 10 to the 23 books, which is probably not practical. That's too many books to have. So a mole is usually, the purpose of a mole is to represent a quantity of atoms or particles. Because you could have one gram of material and there could be billions and billions and billions of atoms inside of it. So instead of, you know, saying a large number like 6 times 10 to the 23, you could say I have a mole of atoms. So you could represent a large quantity with a very simple expression. And so that's the basic idea behind a mole. It's simply to represent a large quantity of something, which is very useful in chemistry when you're dealing with atoms, molecules, and particles. So let's say if I have a mole of carbon atoms. What that means is that I have six times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. So I have a large number of carbon atoms. If I have two moles of carbon atoms, then I have two times, I'm going to round this to six, I have two times six times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. Let's say if I have a mole of carbon dioxide, CO2 is a molecule. So what this means is that I have 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules of CO2. So a mole, as you can see, it, it represents a large quantity of particles, or anything else for that matter. Now sometimes you may need to relate moles to grams. You can also relate moles to grams. Consider the element nitrogen. On a periodic table, nitrogen has an atomic number of 7 and a mass number of 14. We're going to focus on the mass number, which you can also represent as 14 atomic mass units. The number 14 also represents something called the molar mass. It's 14 grams per mole. Now think about what that means, 14 grams per mole. So that means that one mole of nitrogen has a mass of 14 grams. And we know that a mole is 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms, or particles or molecules, but n is just an atom. So 14 grams of nitrogen contains 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms. So now you can connect everything together. So let's say if I have two moles of nitrogen atoms, this would have a mass of 28 grams of nitrogen. If I have three moles of nitrogen, that's going to be 42 grams of nitrogen, three times 14. And so as you can see, the mole is proportional to the mass, and thus you have the expression molar mass. That's the mass of an element when you have one mole of substance. Another example is fluorine with an atomic number of 9 and a mass number of 19. So the molar mass of fluorine is 19 grams per mole. So that means that 19 grams of fluorine is equal to 1 mole of fluorine, which in itself is 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of fluorine. So now you know how to connect grams to moles to atoms.